independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Over 600 individuals were arrested at where they were working um, on Wednesday morning by different ICE officials. It happened over you know, the course of the morning, and it was in seven different sites, but six different cities across the state. So they've all been taken to this processing center in Jackson, Mississippi, where, you know, each one of them will be looked at, um, their different immigration statuses will be assessed, and they'll be taken before a judge, depending on the circumstances. And half were released. Half were released. So there you go. Half were released for different reasons. Some are still there. And then, of course, the politics of it all, because you tore people away from their families. How could you do some of those things? Ah, look, there's a look. How many people today? I continue to tell people how many people today have their child in the car. They're getting pulled over and they struggle financially. They got a couple bench warrants for unpaid tickets, suspended license and they're going to have to go to jail and it's going to happen and nobody cares about that i don't see i don't see better work out there going i can't believe this is going on trump's the worst person in the world oh my lord see it sounds a little bit like cosby there it is terrifying for the families who've been torn apart for kids who don't know when or if they're going to see their kids uh, their their parents again i'm just saying i mean the reality is is it sucks we get it right People come here, they're upset because their country sucks. Opportunities here, they come here and for years both sides have ignored them. While, you know, once in a great while they talk about them, but nothing too crazy, just enough to gin up the bases. And both of them have skin in the game, if you will. One likes the cheap labor. The other one likes the opportunity to eventually make a ton of these people citizens and they'll have a voting block that is just insurmountable. It's just but right now they like fighting on each other over, you know, this. But then Trump comes along and, oh, my God, everything changes. And, you know, oh, this is it. It's white supremacy. It's all of these things. It's cuckoo. It's Cocoa Puffs. It's nuts. And yet let's remember we have laws. A lot of these people have been here for a long time. Right. And the funny thing is, it's like, okay, well, you've come here illegally. Not all of them. Some of them have work permits. Right. They have valid visas to be here. Not everybody. But we can't even have the discussion anymore without it becoming so politically ridiculous. Like, how dare you do that to somebody? How dare you arrest somebody? How dare you ask somebody who's come here, in some cases illegally, in other cases have applied for asylum, been denied, but you still don't want them to leave, but it's not open borders, it's just not enforcement. You can't have a real conversation. It's just not allowed in this day and age. It's ridiculous. It is. It's asinine, it's foolish, it's ridiculous. I sit back and I laugh because... When you sit here and you think about all this stuff and you watch, you know, uh, Bill Maher said it last week, you know, about, you know, the, the craziness of speaking of open borders and allowing people to come here and get free health care and a free college education to major in America sucks is not a winning proposition. I saw very few people on stage last week that seemed like they made sense in this. You get the likes of Julian Castro coming out and saying, no, I'm for borders, just, you know, not real borders. Like, pretend like, oh, yeah, it's there. It's, you're, it's more of a checking in. And I'm all, and by the way, for all those people out there, Chad, you're mean, you're horrible, you're all these things. Let me tell you something. I'm for giving us an opportunity to have freer movement in between the countries to work kind of like they do in Europe in a much easier and better way. I got zero problems with that. But my problem is right now we do have a law. And how dare ICE or anybody else try to do their job? They released 300 of them. That's what they were supposed to do. Look, we checked. You got everything. That's fine. Boom. Maybe we had bad information. Sorry about that. Apparently this thing was planned for a year. But you can't even have a conversation about that anymore. You can't.
well, what about the 300 and the people that they're, they're, they're seeing ads like, oh, we're going to talk to this girl whose mom and dad or who whatever have been taken away. And, and we're going to talk to them and we're going to we're going to we're going to talk about all of this stuff. We're going to paint this picture about the evil and the whole nine yards all the while. Again, there are people today, right, going home, working a job or two, struggling, realizing they've got some outstanding stuff, driving around in a car that's got expired tags or a busted light, but doing all they possibly can. They're going to get pulled over. Nothing from Beto. Why? Because there's no politics in it. Well, that person should have paid their ticket. Oh, I see. <sighs> Frustrating. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Obviously, guns, the debate's on. Red flags, not red flags. The NRA apparently warned Trump today. Hey, you better slow your roll with the red flags. Congress, the Republicans, are held by the throat by the NRA. Enough is enough. Enough is enough is enough. That's Elizabeth Warren, for those you don't know. By the way, in Iowa, right, latest polls, she is uh, in second, solidly. Bernie is in third. Number one, though, still is Biden. Still cruising around, doing his thing. Gave a very presidential speech the other day. Somebody said, could you vote for any Democrat? I said, the Biden-Tulsi Gabbard ticker would definitely intrigue me. Would would definitely would make me go. Oh, I'll listen to what you guys have to say. I want to see. I want to see if you got any normalcy. I, I can't vote for Bernie. Sorry, I can't vote for Elizabeth Warren. I can't vote for insane ideas that go completely against so much of what this country was built on, and really looks the citizens of this country, the residents of the country, people like my grandfather who came here from Mexico, did it correctly, and says, I can't get behind giving everybody free stuff. Just I'm sorry, it just doesn't work for me. Can't do it, and and I've got a lot of friends who are Democrats, and they're like, you know what? I could vote for Biden, but I mm, no, 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 couldn't do it. America tends to be in a situation where we we regulate ourselves, meaning we we may we may put a little Elizabeth Warren in the White House, but we would. We would make sure there's enough Senate seats and congressional seats on the Republican side that a lot of the lunacy couldn't get none. So we tend to regulate ourselves. Now, I think eventually that is going to change. I do believe that we are going to be a one-party country. Is it going to happen in the next election where we see a turning of, uh, you know, I have read an article today, you know, and hey, could go blue. Texas, you know, I'm in Arizona possibility of we're purple but we're going to have more than likely two senators i mean this was a dead red state but more than likely we're going to have two senators that are democrats growing democrats both here in the state legislation uh, uh, legislators and growing potentially democrats representing arizona in dc on top of that biden has the lead here nobody else does so this state is not only turning purple, the chances of it maybe even going blue is real. Could that happen in Texas? Maybe not in the next one. But I'll tell you what, Biden, I think, with somebody like Tulsi Gabbard, could give a run for Trump right now. I think I think that could happen. I know people said, no, no, I think it really could happen. The possibility is there. Is it going to happen? I don't know. But do I think eventually we will have a one-party kind of country? Yes, but I will tell you this. I think we'll have a one-party country with two, we'll have Republicans and a strong, stronger third independent party that will grow somewhere. And it could be a situation where the independents and the Republicans, you're going to need them to get stuff done. So it won't be so much of a one just, hey, we're going to dominate, we're going to come by like California. I mean, think about it. When you look across the country, you've got, what, 49 states that are single-party control, minus like Minnesota. So is it possible? Yeah. Do I think it's going to happen next? I don't, but it's interesting. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us, happy International Cats Day. I'm going to post a picture here of my cat three in a little bit, sleeping. He is so weird. He sleeps in the sink. 
and in a laundry basket. That's like his favorite thing in the world. It's so weird, Jack. What? Huh? What? Jack's allergic to cats, and the funny thing is this cat is the nicest cat, and he's the best cat in the world. Is the best cat on earth. He's see, he Jack knows. Jack knows. But what's funny about it is I was read a great article today. There's a huge scientific study that says cats recognize their name, but they still choose to ignore you. <laughs> I went to pick Jack up. I was gone for twenty four hours. I went to pick Jack up yesterday, I drove all the way to San Diego and all the way back. So I was gone for twenty four hours. I supposed to have been home for a day or so because I was staying in a hotel. I get back last night. Walk in the house. I'm exhausted. He kind of wakes up and gives me a look like, oh, dude, you're home. I was watching cable and I was kicking back and you're here. Uh, but I love cats. I do. They're awesome. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. What do you think about red flags? Should we? Shouldn't we? I don't think they're real. We're going to touch on that. We got what's trending as well. Colin Kaepernick. NFL preseason kicks off an earnest night. Jack and I are going to his first NFL game. He's got his little Kyler Murray jer- jersey on. We're pumped and excited. I, in fact, it's only the second game I've ever been to an NFL game, partly because I lived in this really small – like growing up, I lived in – I don't know if you heard this, Producer Phil. I grew up in this small town in, in, in California called Los Angeles, and we weren't big enough to have a football team. They were like, no, Green Bay's bigger. So so I'm excited to go to the game tonight. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show. Twitter, it's the Chad Benson Show. You go, boy. This isn't about right or left. This is just about right and wrong. Right you are, Chad. The Chad Benson Show. It's been a complaint among flyers for a long time. All of the passengers who just want to bring their dog or cat on board the plane in the cabin for free by calling it an emotional support or service animal. Some even buying fake documents online. The Department of Transportation ruling airlines can ask for specifics about animals before allowing them to board without violating federal law. They can ask for proof of training, vaccination, or behavior, but the new rules say airlines cannot broadly ban certain breeds like pit bulls without other reasons for the animal being denied. Yeah, and look, I I get it, right? Like, I understand that people need animals, right? And, you know, dogs and cats. This is why I continue to say, if airlines are smart, they'll have their own, if that makes sense. Right. So inside of the airports, you have your own. Right. So Delta has their own, you know, well, Delta's bet, you know, hey, can your dog also smell if the pilots have alcohol in their breath? Yeah, that's what's really great about that. But like, let's say Delta and, and U.S. Air and, 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 you know, whatever, who else? They all have their own inside of their cat or dog. And that way we put this silliness to rest. Right. Like people trying to bring in an ostrich like, oh, my God, this is my puffer fish. Yeah, it's just, it's silly, right? Like, well, I'm worried. What if the plane goes down? So you want to kill your animal? (laughs) Do you want to? Like, he didn't do anything to you. He's trying to save you. But he drives me crazy, right? It does. I mean, I've been on it. I got, producer Anthony, I talked to, he said, he tells me one time he gets on an airplane. He was coming out here to to visit me in Phoenix. And he says, it's like a, like a great Dane on the plane. Like it's gotten sitting there and it's just, and I'm just like, I know. I know, right? It's it's crazy. I get it. I do. They, sometimes people need a little emotional support. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Because I work with Wounded Paw Project. I understand that. But so much of it is fake, right? If you're carrying your emotional support dog around in a matching, you know, uh, purse, probably more about your accessory than it is actually the animal. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. This is interesting. Tonight we're going to a football game, and Antonio Brown plays for the, well, now he plays for the Raiders. So he's got an issue, and the issue is, now, mind you, what time of year is this? Producer Phil, is it winter time? It is not. It is not wintertime. He's got frostbite. Cryo is like the new phase, right? Okay. It's, it's a way that you can do it and do it much quicker. If you go there, they'll tell you you can't have on anything wet because if you have on something wet, you can get frostbite. They put things on your extremities, so you're supposed to have something on your hands and your feet. How Antonio Brown had gets frostbite, and he shows us the bottom of his feet on yeah. Instagram, so I'm suspecting that he got it on the bottom of his feet. I'm actually not sure. 
Yeah. Nasty. Now, if you've never done this, it is interesting. And 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 it is imagine speeding up your injuries. It gets to between negative two to three hundred Fahrenheit. Right? You stand there between two to four minutes, and what it does to your body is incredible. Normally, though, and I've seen it where and I've done it where you put on these big mitts, sometimes it's smaller mitts, sometimes they're 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 giant mitts and stuff for you, and you go in there, and if you've got tears, your muscles it, it, it is freezing, but it is so amazing what it can do. Right? And he apparently screwed up and then he posted something on Instagram and he's got like frostbite on his feet. Like, what 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 are you doing? What, what are you doing? How do you go about doing something like that? Don't you know? It is dangerous if you don't do it right. So you've got to do it correctly, but that's got to it is awesome though. If you've ne- if I'm telling you guys, if you have injuries, right? You have problems and in most cities across the country now, they've got cryotherapy somewhere. Try it once. It is wow. It is incredible. It is so like, oh, I can't believe that. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Show. Our good buddy Jim Kennedy from the Kennedy Institute of Public Policy. <laughs> he just texted at me, and he's all, cats are awesome. Cats are awesome. I know it's International Cat Day. And I'm going to post a picture of my cat, three. He's only got three legs. That's what we call him, three. And that cost $3,000 to fix his leg because his fourth leg got shot off by some idiot kids. But... uh. It is true. You got to check out the study. The study is that just it shows you to me. It shows you how smart cats are, that they know their name and they still ignore you. Right. They still are just like, I don't care who you are. I know you. You feed me. If I need you, I'm going to talk to you. If I don't need you, I'm going to pretend like I don't understand. No hable human. <laughs> Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Bud's show. All right, do a little what's trending. Yeah, touch on that. Red flag warnings. What's that all about? How real is that? It's the Chad Benson show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Come on, Mitch McConnell. I mean, where are your guts? You're supposed to be from Kentucky. Everybody I know from Kentucky got guts. Get your coolions, okay? Grab them and do something. Because the American people are fed up with you. We're fed up with you, Stonewall and everything. People are dying on the streets just a couple hours from your house. And you're sitting there and doing nothing. Call the Senate back in the session. Get people moving. You can maybe move some Republicans on this because of the tragedies. Phil, was he trying to say cojones? It's, uh, I'm not sure. Is is Cuyon, Is somebody out there, is Cuyon something that we should know about? Because I thought it was cojones. Right? I don't know. I could be wrong. That's Tim uh, Ryan. He's running for president of the United States, and he wants you to know that. Here's Mitch McConnell. <laughs> no, that's not what he said. That's what he thought, though. If we did that, we'd, we'd just have people scoring points and nothing would happen. There has to be a, a bipartisan discussion here of what we can agree on yeah so that's a no as far as coming back right that's not going to happen the only way to do better and actually make a law is for all of us to agree and quit pointing fingers at each other and that's what i intended to be a part of facilitating but what is it going to be and this is like and and, and i want this i would like for you guys to respond and you can text the program 323-538-2423 we even have a phone line i'm not quite sure if it works we've checked it once in a while 844-344-2423. 844-344-2423. You can tweet at me as well, at Chad Benson Show. The red flag is virtue signaling, right? You're not going to sort out what you think you're going to sort out with a red flag. It will make people feel good, but in the long run, it's not going to do anything. It's not, right? 
and we're going to overstep and we're going to take guns away from people who have not done anything wrong. So what what do we do at that point in time? I'm curious. Right? This is Bernie Sanders yesterday on with Joe Rogan. But all that I ask of the gun owners, and you're absolutely right, 99.9% of gun owners would never in a million billion years think of doing these horrible things. Yeah. So so what do you do? So you're going to virtue signal, and you're going to make people feel good. Hey, guess what? We're doing this. This is amazing. Look at us go. We got this thing. It's a red flag. See something, say something. Do those kind of things. The mom of the El Paso shooter said... She told the cops two weeks before, yeah, my son shouldn't have this gun. He's not mature enough. They're like, well, he bought it legally, and he's an adult. Oh. What are they to do? Just go, right? You're, you're in a domestic dispute, right? You're, you're getting a divorce. You've had some issues in the past where you've been depressed. Right. Your mom died. You lost your job. You're struggling. You've gone and saw a therapist or even a psychiatrist. Maybe you were on some stuff for a while, but you bounce back and that should be held against you. Well, we, we're not talking about that. It's the unintended consequences. Right. If ninety nine point nine nine percent of people aren't going to do something like that. Now, do we look at doing something for real saying, look, here's the deal. I don't think these, quote unquote, mass weapons of war should be in the hands of of people but if there are going to be in the hands of people could we not look at saying look here's two or three tiered licenses you want to drive an 18 wheeler you got to have a certain license you want to drive this you got to have this license it takes a little longer to get because it comes with more responsibility is that something that people could entertain i think most people would the problem is is the untrust that people have with the government right You've got one side of the aisle who wants to essentially take away your health care. You don't think they'd come for your guns? That's the thing that people think. That's what they think. Well, look what they did in in New Zealand. An emotional knee-jerk reaction. That's what happened. Gun owners are not happy. An emotional knee-jerk reaction. When's the last time you made an emotional reaction? And decided, I'm going to take action. Here's my reaction to this emotional situation, and this will be solid. Doesn't work. If you want to get something done, find something that's real, that can get done, that you can do in a bipartisan way. I just don't think the red flag is it. I know Trump, they've already warned Trump, the NRA. Well, you know what, Trump, first of all, let's talk about Trump. You think Trump really gives a rat's ass? Well, of course he does. Does he? Because he banned bump stocks. Remember that? He went and did that. They could say all they want. And right now, the NRA, look, everybody recognizes they got some issues inside of the NRA. They Trump might look at them and say, no, we're going to do this. And you can't stop. You can't. Now, Mitch McConnell can, and he very well may be. But then let's take a look at the data. Safest time in human history. We're living longer. Crime is down. News media is up, though. News media is up big time. Huge. Massive. And when you have an agenda, and that agenda is, this happens, it's white supremacy, it's all of these things, you go and you look, and nobody wants to look at the data, because we've talked about it. Data doesn't sell anything. right? Feelings and stories do. Horrible what took place. Absolutely horrible what took place. We can all agree. Also horrible what took place in Chicago. In in a small area, by the way. Chicago, here's the perfect thing. Republicans use it all the time. Well, look at Chicago. Look at Chicago. No. Chicago is one of the safest cities in the world. Well, how? How can that be? There's all these gun things. It's a small area in Chicago that has these problems. But when you want to exploit something, you're going to do stuff like this. Do I think this is going to work? I do not. I don't think Mitch McConnell's even going to even going to entertain any of this stuff. Do I think there's things that we could do? Absolutely. But doing a red flag thing, I just think got to be honest with you guys. It's going to be over there's going to be overreach, there's going to be lawsuits and the ACLU by the way is going to be on gun owner side. 
So there's a lot of stuff here that you'd have to unpack to even get close to making this thing work. Several states have it, and they've been sued, and the fights are going on. You've heard about people that have lost their guns, and they're like, they, they're, they're fighting for years to try to get their guns back, and they haven't done anything wrong. So we'll see what takes place. I just don't think this is going to work. I think if you really want to do something, let's figure out how we go about doing things. And also, and I think, you know, what we've talked about this with Switzerland, one of the things that, about Switzerland I find always amazing is, is kids learn at such a young age gun safety and how to use the gun. They have more respect and they have less fear. It takes the fear out of it. It does. And then most importantly, the thing that's never talked about is we need to address the anger. Why are so many young white men in particular so pissed off and angry at the world? What is going on between neutering them, telling them that toxic masculinity is, 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 is it's all their fault, right? No matter how woke they are, it's not woke enough, right? I, I, I read this article of this guy that has left the, uh, the, basically the socialist of America. And we, we always joke about, we play that thing all the time. Uh, point of, uh, point of partner Mary procedure, uh, uh, let's stop using he hims. Uh, I'm a he him. Uh, let's stop using pronouns. And and he's like, I can't be in an organization where if you're white and you're male, you are not allowed to have a voice because you're blamed for everything from fifty, a hundred years ago, and you're told that all the way up. Yeah, it's frustration. There's a lot of things that you have to get to, but if we're going to be serious, we have to address the issue. And why is it that other places have guns and they don't have these kind of issues? And we do. A very small group of people who are angry and upset and pissed off. What is going on in their life? Some of them may be mentally ill and sick, and some of them are angry. Why? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson. Shao is your Twitter. You can tweet at uh, me. Please do. What do you think? I would like to know what you think. How do we go about doing this? Text the program as well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Let's find out what is trending. Yesterday, Equinox, if you guys don't know what that is, uh, Equinox and Soul Cy- a Cycle are owned by a company who owned by the owner of the Miami Dolphins, who's a friend of Trump, who's throwing him a... Uh, a fundraiser, and now people, you're not supposed to go to Equinox and Soul Cycle. You have to do what? Stay away from them. You have to boycott them. Number four, Cynthia Brown. Number three, Antonio Brown. We just talked about it. Samsung, number two. And number one, and producer Phil, you did watch it, was 90210 yesterday. How was that? Give us your, uh, was it awful? It was hysterical. It was? Did it bring back some memories? Oh, yeah. It brought back great memories. How does everybody look? Uh, most of them look pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Gabrielle Cotteris looks a little... Uh, she, she looks a little haggard. A little haggard. A little haggard. Well, she is 83 years old, right? She was like 70 when she was on that show. <laughs> Today, Duke Johnson, number five. West Indies versus India. That's cricket. Tiger Woods, three. Field of Dreams, two. And number one is International Cats Day. So you can submit your picture to International Cats Day. I love cats. They're crazy. I love them. They're awesome pets. They're the easiest pets in the world to take care of, right? They are. You have to admit that. They're absolutely easy to take care of. But that's number one thing in the world that's trending right now. Also trending on the Twitter side is Rosanna Arquette. If you guys don't know what she's done, she posted, I guess, yesterday something. I had to look it up three or four times because I was like, there's no way that's real. Right? There's just no way that is is it that can't be her. Has the check mark and everything? I triple quadruple checked it. She tweets out, "I'm sorry I was born white and privileged. It disgusts me, and I feel so much shame." What is wrong with you? I'm just curious. What in God's name is wrong with you? How? Why would you do that? Why would anybody in their right mind apologize for being born 
the color of the skin that you are, and you have so much shame. Man, that's an issue right there. Talk about guilt. There's one of those problems. You want to know why people are pissed off and angry, especially young men, when they're told that you're white skin. It, it, it's so funny. You'll hear people say, you ever been judged for the color of your skin? And a lot of people, if you're honest, you're like, like I am now, like I'm being judged now. I apologize for being born white. You should apologize for suddenly Susan or whatever that show, desperately seeking Susan. If you want to apologize for something. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. He's a tough badass. But he saved somebody yesterday. We'll touch on that. It's the Chad Benson Show. separation anxiety that's dumb check out chad 24 7 at his website chadbensonshow.com and on itunes free the chad benson show never feel lonely again it was early tuesday morning when a homeless man on a scooter sped through an intersection in east point and right into a truck Police Captain Alan Glover says the trucker was unable to stop in time. The scooter hit the passenger side of his vehicle. It was the fourth time since May someone has died in the Atlanta metro area while riding a scooter. In East Point, Kyrie Taylor says it's dangerous out here in the streets. East Point city officials are now thinking about how to regulate e-scooters. So is Atlanta. But already, towns in this area like Marietta and Norcross have banned these scooters outright. Yeah, uh, I see them all the time in Tempe and everywhere. And it's crazy. Like, you know, it's, uh, I don't, they're like, they're for the taking, right? You don't need an Uber. I know you've been drinking, but here's a scooter. Why don't you ride it around? Huh? It's nuts. And there's not one week I don't go by and see somebody doing something stupid because I stay a couple nights a week in town. I live further out, a little bit more rural, if you're new to the show. And so I've got a decent drive in. So one or two nights a week, I will stay in town. And where I stay is right next to ASU. So it, you see these scooters everywhere. And people, first of all, people trash them. They do. You see people doing tricks on them. And I don't know how many times they're, they're almost crashing into people. It's 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 crazy. It's crazy. And th- I... I'm sure it was a great idea. Somebody go, oh, it's a great idea. We'll do this. It's going to save the world, right? This is global warming. And by the way, the new the new study out about that is they're not as climate friendly as people thought. But it was going to be the hipster thing to do because all these young kids that are in their college age now and who are going to use them in a lot of areas, what are they? Right? They've, they've grown up on the Razor scooters and stuff like this. No, it's just people doing dumbass things. And as you always say, Producer Phil, play a stupid game. Win a stupid prize. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show. Twitter. Tweet at us. A lot of you guys are tweeting in, texting about the red flags. Like, Chad, what should we do about, you know, we got to do something about guns. Well, the first thing we need to do is look at all of the data, put our heads together in a real way, and find out if this is a knee-jerk reaction or if the data is showing that we've got less issues than we think. And maybe this was more media hysteria with political motives than something that happens every 20 seconds, right? If you put CNN on the beach after a shark attack for four days straight with MSNBC and everybody else, I bet you could get people to stop going in the water. Let's look at all the data. How about that? 323-538-2423. At Chad Budson Shaw is your Twitter. He's a great guy. His story is one of the best stories in Hollywood. And yesterday, to the rescue, came Hollywood tough guy with a great heart, Danny Trejo, as he rescued a young child who was... So two cars crashed, car flipped, looked like a trailblazer or something. Uh, people were hurt inside the car. He crawled through the glass to get to the baby that was in the car and rescued the baby. And I love Danny Trejo. His, again, his story is amazing. Yeah, I kept facing him away from the accident and just talking to him. And then some lady kind of pointed and said, like, don't bring him over here. Yeah. Went in, climbed underneath, did the things he had to do, got the kid out. Kid, He said if 
the baby didn't have a car seat, the baby would have been dead. And I've seen the car. It is, uh, it, it's a mess. Three people went to the hospital. Baby was fine. He's just a good dude. Everything good that has happened to me has happened as a direct result of helping someone else. Everything. And that's the way I live. Yeah, absolutely. His story, though, if you don't know anything about his story, and he's 75, by the way, just to just let you guys know, but he went to prison for a very long time, right? Like, super long. And he got out and had an opportunity on the movie Runaway Train to help out somebody when they were trying to train boxers and talk about prison, and he was laughing about it. They put him in it. The next thing you know, away he went, and it's been nonstop. But that guy, that guy's, that guy's lived the real life. Real life. Real jail. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show. Twitter. Love hearing from you. Instagram as well. At Chad Benson Show. Feel free to hit me up. What do you think about red flag warnings? Is that something real or just virtue signaling? It's Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Mitch McConnell's going to do what he's done every damn time. He just follows the president. The first article of the Constitution says we are governed by the people. And Mitch McConnell better understand that. I can't tell you how sick we are about this. This is happening in too many communities. It's happening in Dayton and El Paso and all of this other stuff. And we're sitting around here waiting for Mitch McConnell to get his marching orders from Donald Trump, who's causing white nationalists to go around shooting people of color in the United States. I mean, give me a break. Oh, Tim Ryan there. He's fired up. By the way, I just want to point out to everybody again. Safest time in human history. We had our bubble somewhat penetrated by as much a mass media as it was mass shooting. Nonstop coverage, 24-7, inundated. Let's let's be honest here. I'm a data guy. I want to look at data. Let's look at data and facts. Crime has been going down, down, down. Not saying we don't have a problem that we need to address. But this is a as much a media and political issue for them to gin up their bases as it is anything else. So you can yell at Mitch McConnell all day. Well, we want red flags. Okay, so how are you going to go about doing this, really? Right? I guess the NRA already was on Trump today warning them. So you want red flags. You want a virtue signal. You want something that's probably not going to do anything. It's probably not going to do anything other than probably infringe on many people who haven't done anything. And you've seen some of these laws that are already in other states. And the ACLU, by the way, has sued many of those states on behalf of gun owners. Why? Because the way they look at it is, is you are starting to punish people based on what? So due process, you want to take away their guns. And in doing so, you're going to see a lot of people who are having their guns taken away. Why? Because they visited a doctor six months ago because their mom died and they were depressed? Because they're on an antidepressant for something? Because I'm curious, right? Because they're in the middle of a bad divorce hearing. Let's 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 be real here. Why are we not drilling down and trying to figure out? All right, look, why why are we having these young, predominantly white men who are in their late teens, early twenties, who are pissed off and angry at the world? What is going on in their world that is causing them to do this? 
Right? Well, it's white nationalism. We'll go over that a little bit later, right? It's a lot of things. And let's remember of the mass shooters this past week. One was on the right, one was on the left. Both had one thing in common. They were pissed off and angry at the world. Why? What was going on? How did you get to that point? It is a fair question to ask. So the politics of it all, they're right in front of us, right? You're screaming and yelling all day. It's all, and then you, and then, and then, and they go and do their thing, right? That's the politics of it all. Then they go raise money, and they gin up their bases, and they get their sound bites. But you're not dealing with the issue, right? What is the issue? The red flag warnings. Well, how's that work, really? I'm just curious. Guy bought the gun legally in Texas. Mom was a little bit worried. Said, I don't think he's mature enough to own a gun like that. Okay. Well, what, what would have happened? Would you have gone and taken the guns away? Could they have dressed that? Would it have gone far enough? Would, would it not have gone far enough? Well, if we prevent one. That all sounds great. What if we prevent one? Yeah. But what if we overreach over and over again and we see our our freedoms infringed upon over and over again? You know, we've talked about this before, and this week I've addressed it on more than numerous occasions when it comes to things like what you see in a place like Switzerland. High rate of gun ownership, none of this stuff happens for a lot of reasons, right? For a lot of reasons. One of the big things is because they get kids involved early As a duty, they feel to their country to learn about guns, boys and girls. Take a bit of the fear away, but also teach them some of the responsibility. But I continue to tell you, one of the things that you don't see all these things in Europe, even though there are places that have high gun ownership, is really simple. We have neutered our boys in this country. We have taken away so much. We're telling them all the time, it's toxic masculinity. You, my son is sitting behind me here. So Jack's here. We're going to football game night. Uber excited. He's being told throughout his life that toxic masculinity. He's hearing it. It's like asking me. I'm like, what? You know? All of these things. I mean, it's in a place where, you know, you, you can no longer be a boy. There's no wrestling. There's no this. There's no that. There's none of this stuff. That They're trying to find their way. Things are now skewed more towards, especially in school, the female side of things. It's nuts. It's crazy. Then they, they, you know, I mean, it, it is it is crazy, but we don't see that, right? You know, fathers have been devalued. We're telling everybody, if you're white and you're male, it's your fault. My fault for what? Everything. Huh? People are frustrated. They feel disenfranchised. And most of them just go, and they get on with themselves. But there's those few out there that take it a step further. Rather than try to drill down and figure out, okay, what's going on here? How do we figure this out? What do we? Let's treat it. Let's drill down and figure out what it is. We're going to just say, well, let's try this. It's virtue signaling. It's not going to do anything. And what do we know about government? Give them an inch, they'll take a yard. That's the other thing. In Europe and in other places, you know what they do? They trust their governments more than ours. We don't trust our government like they do. We have, a, we have a skeptical way of looking at it, and part of that's because our founding fathers wanted us to have that. One of the reasons we're to bear arms wasn't just to protect ourselves from potential outside invaders. The reality is the, uh, uh, there was never going to really be any kind of outside invaders or people trying to overthrow us. Why? Because we were so far isolated from the rest of the world. They were more worried about what would our government do, the overreach. Why? Because they'd come from places where there was that. They'd come from places. They're more worried about that. We start to to give in on certain things. Am I a big gun guy? I said, look, you know what? There's ways we can go about addressing stuff. You want to look at people that want to have an AR-15, right, or, 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 you know, a high capacity? Have them have a special license. I got zero problems with that. Background checks? Hell yeah, we should have background checks. Are there too many loopholes or things that are allowed to do in certain areas and stuff? Yeah. I think we can look at a lot of those things. 
But to virtue signal and say, well, we're going to do the red flag thing, because we th- I don't think any of these guys were uh, mentally uber disturbed. I think they had a, a, a skewed, gnarly vision of the world. I think they did. I think they had a gnarly vision of the world, and they were pissed off and angry. Are there people out there that are absolutely a mess and shouldn't be anywhere near weapons? Probably shouldn't even be anywhere near a moving vehicle. Yeah. But when you go and you look at the data, and again, I'm a data person. I look at the data and I say to myself, out of all of the mass shooters, how many of them are found to be mentally disturbed and it's like 15 18 percent something like that depends on where you look we've got real issues that we need to drill down into virtue signaling to make some people happy to not do anything i don't think is the way we go about doing it i think if we're going to address it we need to be honest and address it but we're reactionary and how many times do i have to tell everybody when you do something out of emotion and you make a knee-jerk reaction. How many times do you regret it? Uh, always. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Love hearing from me. I don't know if you guys heard this, but there was raids, right? Raids. Nearly 700 undocumented workers undocumented, arrested and detained at a number of food processing plants. It is what immigration officials are calling the largest ever enforcement operation targeting a single state. Trump administration critics are calling the enforcement draconian and complaining that the inf- operation left numerous children without their parents with no clear indication when they would see them again. Yeah. So, but... Are they not supposed to be here? Here's my thing with the raids, right? One was at a Coke plant, right? The food processing place, another place, a couple of these. Here's my thing. If we're going to do this, let's do it real. Let's do it right. Let's go after the employers as much as we go after other people that are in this situation, right? You've come here illegally. You're working at a plant, right? And let's be real with how easy it is to get identities even if you have universal background checks it's it's there are still going to be people who are going to be able to get identities and get through those but you're arresting 700 people why are we not looking more at the employers and what's going on there that's something that needs to be addressed as well let's like if you start taking away opportunities to work in this country and you hold people accountable for hiring people illegally, if you buy known stolen goods, that's a crime. You should be in trouble for hiring people and knowing they're not here legally. Now, if they give you all the paperwork and they go through the whole thing and they said they've got it all and it all matches up and you go through the background check, that is one thing. But how many of these people that, that they picked up Went through that. I'm just curious. Go after the employers. Go after homeowners, right? You go hire a bunch of people that are here illegally, and you do something. Go go after people. Because what happens then is once it starts to dry up, go look at immigration. Go look at 2008, 2009, and the the drop-off of people coming here illegally to work. Why? Because jobs were scarce. And if you're going to struggle, you'd probably rather do it in your own home than somewhere else. Start cutting that off. You, I bet you make a change. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson. Cheryl is your Twitter. Hope you're doing well. I'm excited. Fun day. A lot of stuff to get to. Fun stuff, too, kids. Fun stuff. By the way, just to let you know, I'm going to a football game tonight. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm going to see the Cardinals play the Chargers tonight. Jack's here. He's wearing his little Kyler Murray, number one overall draft pick. It is uh, – it, I'm excited. I'm excited. I've been to one pro football game in my life. And I was candlestick. I went to, uh, God, what was it? We saw the 49ers <laughs> in Minnesota Monday Night Football like 12 years ago, 10 years ago. It was freezing. It's like September 1st. It was freezing. Candlestick was such a dump. I'm excited tonight, though. This will be good. This will be good. They've got like a 14-inch hot dog. So Jack and I are going to see if we can take one of those down. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show. Twitter. Tweet at us. Tis the Chad Benson Show. Chad 
take a fake news break. Check, 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 check out the really important news of the day at our website, chadbensonshow.com. Once there, click on Chad's free podcast and get real. The Chad Benson Show, where truth and the American way live. Print free. In general, climate change will cause declined yields, increased prices, reduced Nutrition levels and uh, disruption in supply chains for food. Climate change, climate change, quick climate change. It's over, it's done, we're all doomed, can't stop, figure it out. It's the hottest time in the history of ever, forever, ever. We're breaking records left, right, and center. Oh, wait, slow down. This is interesting. AccuWeather is trying to tell everybody, you guys need to calm down. Well, it's Chad, it's the hottest time in history. I mean, God, how hot is breaking records left, right, and center? We're not breaking any records. Yeah, we are, totally. We we're smashing records. It's never been this hot. New York City's roasting. New York City's not a te- had a temperature over 100 degrees since 2012. Well, what do you mean? Yeah. Here's something that's never talked about. 26 of 50 states set their all-time high temperature records during the 30s, and they still stand. Some have since been tied. In addition... 11 states' all-time high-temperature records were set before the 30s. Only two states have had their all-time record temperatures that were set in the 21st century, South Dakota and South Carolina. They're putting this out because they're like, people need to calm down. And when I hear this, oh, just climate change is going to destroy the world, right? It's, just, it's over. It's done. I'm like, well, let, technology is going to save a lot of us, so let's just slow our roll. Well, it's never been this bad. Before the 1980s, let's, let's think about this for a second. On average, about a million people died from famine every year. Since then, on average, about 75,000 people die. Poverty has been virtually eliminated, extreme poverty, globally. We have tons of food. We do, well, we're gonna, we're, there's always this fear that we're going to run out, right? There's always this fear. You know what? The average person has it. You want to know why? I talk to so many people, and how many of you out there watch Netflix, and you'll save a movie or save something, because well, I don't know if I'm going to watch that now, just in case I'll watch that. And everybody starts saving and put things inside their list as if they're going to run out of stuff. We have this, this scarcity and lack, but that goes back to the fear factor. We just talk about with guns. We overdo it. Yesterday, we're driving here, right? And God bless my son. There's big, we're going through a big storm, there's lightning, and he's worried that we're going to get hit by lightning. And well, what's going to happen? Like, it's not going to happen, but it can happen. It's like with, we have this bizarre world that we live in, and part of that is because everything is so amazing. Everything is safer than it's been in forever. We're living longer. We're doing all of these things that we've, it's, it's incredible, and those things are going to continue to grow. But once that little safety bubble, right, once that person's attacked by a shark and it's on the news 24-7, if, if CNN went down to the beach and MSNBC and they just talked about shark attacks for 24-7, just nonstop, made it a political thing and fear factored everybody, guess what would happen? People stop going in the water. And then you look at the data and go, well, this is stupid, but we don't want to do any of that because if it bleeds, it leads. And in a world of news business, business is the thing that's mightily important. Got to get people's eyeballs on it. But we're going to come to an end. The U.N. says we're going to have no food. We'll be fine. For years, they talked about we're going to run out of fossil fuels. Technology came along and said we got more than enough, right? We're, we're going to be fine. And technology is also going to figure out ways to even not even use fossil fuels. It's crazy. 323-538-2422. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. So Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. 
And this is Chad Benson. You know what drives me crazy? You download an app. So I just downloaded an app. We're going to football game night. The Cardinals now, Arizona Cardinals do everything. You you can no longer, I guess, have paper tickets. Everything is digital, and it changes every, like, three seconds. So it's you can't even screenshot it. And so I downloaded the app maybe 30 minutes ago, and they're like, you need to update your app. <laughs> I'm like, what has changed in 30 minutes that I need to figure out that I need to do that? I'm just curious about that. Just, just, just uh, for me, just curious. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. A lot of you tweeting in about and texting in about the whole red flag thing. And and let, let me tell you something. I'm all for let's talk about how we can do things in a better way. How we can look at guns with more responsibility and more understanding. How we can do some of these things where we can step back and say, this is what we're doing. This is why we are doing it. That has a real, hey, here's the problem. We're drilling deep down into the problem and our solution is this. And it's not going to be perfect. Right? It's not. I, I Yesterday I watched uh, Rogan and Bernie Sanders. And he said, look, you know, even if we do some of these things, I'm here to tell you there's no magic wand and it's not perfect. It's not. He goes, it's not going to change overnight. No, because what's going to happen is people are still going to have opportunities to get guns or get things that they can do. Right. You take if if you're hell bent on killing a bunch of people. Right. That's your your your, you don't care. You want to bring as much destruction and you say, well, we don't have guns. People figure out a way. I'll rent a truck. I'll rent a truck and I'll figure out how to build a bomb. I'll do something if you're hell bent on doing it. Rather than do that, right? Okay, okay, why do you feel this way? What is going on? Why do you feel the need to kill? For some people, maybe it is anger and a bloodthirst and you're not going to be able to fix them. For others, you start to drill down and you get to the point where you go, okay, you know what? These are why. This is why. And you could start looking at how to actually find long-term solutions. But many people, nah, nah. They're just like, well, let's do this and we're all going to feel better, right? I don't know how many times we do this in politics, right? Something happens. We pass something where we all pat each other on the back and it makes us feel a little bit, oh, we just put in, you know, we're just, we're, we're, look at this, our bubble, our safety bubble's up again. We're all, we all have done, and it's not real as far as doing anything. It's not. It's not real. You've just done something and placated people without actually solving the problem or addressing it, right? It's like you've got the little the little check engine light comes on, and you just put a sticker over it or something, so you can't see it. Still there, but you feel you've done something, so you don't know it's there because you don't see it every second. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us, Joaquin Castro, the twin brother of Julian Castro was on on MSNBC, and we talked about it the day before last, how he did something I thought was asinine and stupid, and a lot of people, even on the Democratic side of the aisle, are calling him on it. And I think he was surprised by what happened between he and Willie Geist uh, on MSNBC. I figured, you know, he, you know, you go on there, it's left-leaning, you're super left, it, it should be a friendly place. It wasn't meant as a boycott. It wasn't meant to to target these people. It was meant to draw attention to the fact that we've got a lot of people in our community who uh, are respected by San Antonio, who uh, are contributing to this guy that's using their money to fuel hate. Right. So he releases a bunch of names and, and, and workplaces of people who've donated to Donald Trump. Right. And so don't tell me it's not meant to boycott. Don't tell me it's not meant. You would, If it wasn't meant to be something like that, then what are you doing? And in a day and age where you're worried about crazy people and white supremacists and all of this stuff, why would you do something like that? I'm just curious. And if you say, right, you, you we're, we're not meant to, bo- don't tell me. You're not meant to boycott. The, the left loves the boycotting of stuff. They just love, they love it. And they do it way better than the right does. 
They do it so much better than the right does. The right is, you know, because by and large, most people are like, whatever. But they do. I mean, they're doing it right now with, with, with uh, you know, Tucker, and they did it. You name it, they do it. They, and great. They go after people, and that's what you want to do. I mean, my God, they try to do it to In-N-Out Burger. In-N-Out Burger. They went after In-N-Out Burger, and people were like, all right, we're done. <laughs> Sorry. But why would you do this? But, Congressman, as you look at this list, I know you said you didn't put their addresses out there. It's easy to find them. These people undoubtedly are already being harassed. What do you say to those people this morning who said, I made a campaign donation and now I'm going to be harassed? What do you say to them? Do you want them to repent for their support for Donald Trump or what do you want from them? The first thing is that I don't want anybody harassed or targeted. But they will be because or... you put their names on, in public. Look, that, that was not my intention but that's these things are these things are public no what i would like for them to do is think twice about supporting a guy who is fueling hate in this country well let me ask you a question if i gave to donald trump and you've just done this to me you've doxed me you're coming after my job or my business because i know that's not what you meant but that is exactly what you meant you want people to put pressure on people And that's what will happen. Right? Because much like with Trump and his rhetoric, and I bring the people together, which is a bunch of crap, but the reality is 99.9% of the people get it. It's that 0.1% who don't get that you're making a political point. And they go Cousin Eddie and do something they're not supposed to do. So you've gone and done this. And now, because you're getting hammered by people in your own party who are also worried Okay, is this what we're going to do now? So now people are going to start putting things up that I've donated to or people have donated to me, and now my my side has to worry about that, which is so stupid. You're a clown. And by the way, I guess two of those people had given to you. But if you agree that rhetoric can lead to incitement, even if it just triggers one person to do something terrible, does it give you any pause about putting these people's names out in public? Willie, they're already public. They're already out there. There are 11 retirees and one homemaker who are not public. Right. And this was already circulating. I shared it. If anything, I think what I am concerned about is the distraction from the fact that people are grieving in El Paso. The world and the country should be focused on that. Wow, that was, did you know El Paso? <laughs> like, that is, he and his brother, man, they, they'll they put it on thick, won't they? They'll, they'll, they'll throw that Latin flavor in there. It's no longer El Paso, it's El Paso. So they're grieving, and so you felt you had the right to do this. And, and what happens? I'm just curious. Let's say something goes and happens, right? Let's say, for the sake of argument, people show up at somebody's house, Something happens, right? You've got a retiree that's at home in Texas. You get a bunch of ding dongs that show up, like Mitch, you know, Mitch McConnell's house. They start saying things, doing stuff. That person reacts. Somebody gets hurt or even killed. No responsibility. Well, I didn't really want that to happen. But see, I mean, this is, this is what happened. It's all Donald Trump's fault. No, you're a clown. You shouldn't have done that. There are some things you just shouldn't have done. This is one of them. This is it. Your brother is probably pissed you're getting more publicity than he is. 323 538 2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Speaking of, of boycotting, so with the NFL season getting ready to go in full swing, you've got uh, Still Kaepernick tweeted out like 858 days since I've last been employed. In the NFL, but I'm ready to go. Uh, uh, you know, did his thing. The owner of the Miami Dolphins, who owns Equinox, uh, is like a fitness place in Soul Cycle, is holding a fundraiser, and because of that, <sighs> you're in trouble. Some customers, including celebrities like Chrissy Teigen and Billy Eicher, are calling for boycotts of the fitness change Equinox and SoulCycle after reports their parent company's chairman is hosting a fundraiser for President Trump. Stephen Ross is a billionaire real estate developer who also owns the Miami Dolphins. So he owns the Dolphins, and obviously with the whole thing, with the knee and all of that stuff, and 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 what some people said, and the owners, and uh, you know the battle that was going on with Trump. So this guy's going to throw a fundraiser for him. 
Right? So he's throwing a fundraiser for him. And, of course, because he owns some of these things, you've got to not use some of these things because he supports Donald Trump. So see where we're going? But we're not calling for boycotts. Well, this is a specific let's boycott. The Washington Post reported Tuesday that there will be a fundraiser for the president at Ross's home in the Hamptons tomorrow. Both companies posted statements on Twitter distancing themselves from the fundraising event and noting Ross is not involved in management. Ross said in a statement to the Washington Post that he and the president have been friends for 40 years and he has voiced his opinions to the president when the two disagree. Does it matter? Does it matter? Does it matter? You shouldn't do that. Here's my issue with things like this, right? Is the when you when you go after people's livelihoods, when you go after certain things, you're trying to silence them. You're not trying to change their minds. You're not trying to get the, you know, let me point out why this is bad. Let me point. You're trying to silence them. You're going very authoritarian. You you you, you know, you're you whether it's, you know, hey trans kids Right. Shouldn't be, you know, uh, when they're older and they want to make that decision. It's one thing at three. You're, that's a little, you know, it's a little early in life for a life decision. Right. And when you go after them, and you threaten their livelihood, you threaten to do this and you want them fired. You get to a point where it's like you're looking to shame people. You're not looking to change their mind. You're not going to have a discussion. And that's your right to go after them to a certain extent. But. These are the reasons why the I tell everybody these are this is the reason why Trump. This is the reason why. You know, you donated to something ten years ago. Well, you got to be fired now because we're woke now. So your 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 actions back then. You're going to pay for those actions, even if it's just a differing opinion, right? Whatever that differing opinion is. Sorry, you can't have that. Not in this day and age. No differing opinions. Those who are most tolerant in so many ways are the, quote, unquote, you know, diverse, inclusive, all of that stuff are the least tolerant when it comes to the thing that matters with diversity, which is thought and mind. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Bernie was on with Rogan. It was very interesting. He promised something. We will talk about that. The Emmys, will they or won't they have a host? It's the Chad Benson Show. If you're part of the politically exhausted majority, don't fear. Your time to be validated and rejuvenated is here. It's the Chad Benson Show. One last question. If you got into the office and you found out something about aliens, if you found out something about UFOs, would you let us know? Well, I'll tell you, my wife would demand that I let you know. (laughs) Is your wife a UFO nut? No, she's not a UFO nut, which is, Bernie, what is going on? Do you have any access to the records? Uh, You don't have any access? I don't. Honestly, no? I don't know. Okay. You, you let us know, though? All right. I'll be on the show. We'll announce it on the show. How's Please. That? All right. Please you got to. Oh, that was yesterday. Bernie, uh, who's struggling in the polls, by the way? Warren is definitely stealing a lot of his thunder and uh, struggling. Struggling. He is third in most polls, second in a few, but uh, definitely they're both behind Biden. But it's funny. You know, like, that was my first thing, man. I, You know the first question. That Trump asked is, all right, where are the aliens? Because he's a little bit of a conspiracy theorist, right? Just a smidge. He's like, where are the aliens? I need to see the aliens. I need to see the aliens. And they're like, look, of all the, like, we could tell Bernie, maybe, because we could probably say, Bernie, look, here's the deal. We're going to tell you there's aliens. You cannot tell the world because the world is not ready for it. I mean, you see how just crazy they are, you know, on a shark attack, for God's sakes. So if you you tell them they're aliens, they're going to lose it. And Bernie would be like, all right, I'll go out there and pretend. Oh, it's a 1%. It's not really aliens. Trump, they're like, we can't tell this guy. He will tweet pictures within 30 seconds. This just can't do it. Cannot do it. We can't tell him any of the secrets. Like other presidents, you probably are like, yeah, they know. But we can't tell Trump because Trump can't keep a secret. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet us. You know, that would be interesting. So yesterday... 
Chris Rock tweeted out something, or the other day, and it was... He's a comic. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. Producer Phil, did you know Chris Rock is a comic? I've heard this, but I wasn't really yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, he tweeted out, whenever you hear about mass shootings, the first thing you know is, and he tweeted a picture of 97-year-old actress Betty White. Do you guys get it? Betty White? Betty's White? <laughs> and people are like, it's racist. It's it's. It's humor. It's what comics do. But that's wrong. It's the wrong time. It's what comics do. They go to places that other people wouldn't go. Comedy is booming right now. Do you want to know why? Because we live in a world of political correctness. And by and large, the only place that you... And even now, it's being challenged more and more. Where people can go and they can listen to things that make them laugh. without the fear of being in trouble for laughing at something that they shouldn't laugh at. That's why comedy's booming. It's totally why comedy's booming. Absolutely. Not that that's not being challenged. I mean, God, comics won't even go onto college campuses right now, most of them, because they're just like, I can't deal with it. But comedy clubs? Oh, it's a great time to be a comic. It is. To push that envelope, to do some of those things, to say some of those things that most people think and are here and and get that it's only a joke. But, ooh, can't, mm -mm, not anymore. Oh, jeez. What's interesting about this year to me is how many amazing shows we're saying goodbye to, right? I mean, you've got obviously Game of Thrones and Our Own Empire. You've got Veep and Big Bang Theory. And, And so... And this is new to me. I've never worked on the Emmys before. You really do have to look at all the trade-offs of, all right, if you have a host and an opening number, that's 15, 20 minutes you can't use to salute the shows. Yeah, so they're going to go hostless this year at the uh, uh, Oscar, I mean, Emmys, and uh, they're looking around going, well, it didn't work so bad last time. And maybe they just thought to themselves, my God, who are we going to get that hasn't done something or offended somebody? Who are we going to get that we're going to find out did something 15 years ago, you know, before Twitter? Right on a MySpace page that they thought was funny that's going to get him in trouble or her in trouble. So we're just going to go hostless. It's just, oh, God. Once again, Kevin Hart got in trouble for being a comic in a tweet and a bit on his comedy thing. Chris Rock is in trouble for something. And by the way, Betty's White or Betty White? Or bet he's actually white? (laughs) It's very true. Look at the stats. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Congress, the Republicans, are held by the throat by the NRA. Enough is enough. (laughs) Yesterday, apparently they were coalescing around gun gun control or something. I I, I don't even know, like, what, what, what are you guys doing? Well, we're going to do red flags. So what what is what is that? Is that, is that like when you're in the ocean and they put up the red flag? You're like, oh, it's gonna be a windy, blustery day, and there's high tide surf, high there's shark warnings. So, well, we want to get to people when they're ye- in a situation when they're younger. Maybe we see some red flags. Okay, well, how's that work though? Is it? I'm just I'm, I want to break it down, right? Because you want to do something, you want to take away people's guns potentially without due process, right? We, I, I'd like to know. I'd like to, I'd, I'd like to understand. You're not going to deal with the underlying thing. What you're going to do is you're going to take away people's guns, and then what? 
then what? Who decides when they get him back? How do you guys decide if if he or she, and most likely he, is a threat to himself or the community? Do you bar him from buying, uh, uh, from driving a car, or renting a truck, or going online? I mean, if somebody you think is 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 so absolutely sad against killing a large group of people for political reasons, for being pissed off because women won't date him, for whatever, how do you stop him? So you take away. His guns. What if he runs over a bunch of people? Like, oh, my God, we should have took away his license and his car. What if he builds a bomb? Oh, my God, I can't let him get on YouTube, but he can't purchase any cleaning supplies. Oh, this is just all gone sideways. Right? Virtue signaling for the sake of it without figuring out. Maybe we should figure out why. Said person over here, young, angry, usually white, young, angry man, is pissed off at the world. Maybe we should figure that out before we decide to encroach on everybody else. Maybe that's something we should look at. Bernie Sanders was on with Joe Rogan yesterday. By the way, if you guys want to see what Bernie is like in a real conversation where there's not screaming and yelling, great interview. Rogan's podcast is amazing. And it's uh, it was just good. And he talked about a lot of stuff, including the fact, yeah, about what he really feels in, in some ways about, like, you know, the average gun owner. But all that I ask of the gun owners, and you're absolutely right, 99.9% of gun owners would never in a million billion years think of doing these horrible things. Yeah, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. You know that and I know that. But now we're going to go look at different things. Can this be used against a a husband? Right? Who's done nothing wrong. He ain't done anything wrong. But he's in the middle of a divorce hearing. And she says, well, I'm worried about my safety. And the kid's safety. And so, even though there's nothing there. Right? Can this be used in a situation where uh, six months or a year ago, maybe you lost your job, your mom died, you 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 struggle, you go see some thera- you go seek out therapy, and it was a a a temporary downturn in your life that anybody would be upset in, but you needed to talk to somebody, and it, it wasn't a ongoing thing, but that could be used against you, but because of the virtue signal reaction. When's the last time you made a great decision based on emotions and reaction? When's the last time you're like, hey, I made a great decision there, right? We're going to a football game tonight. You know what happens in football? Sometimes quarterbacks, in particular young ones, we're going to see Kyler Murray, number one overall pick tonight. Jack is uber excited. They make bad decisions. They panic in a certain situation. They do something they shouldn't, and they end up trying to do too much or or reacting in such a way the ball gets intercepted. (gasps) Oh, you get older, a little bit more wise. You take a deep breath, realize it's okay to throw the ball away once in a while. Meaning it's okay to maybe take a step back and go, let's look at the data. Let's put everything together. Let's not do something. If there's something to do that's real, then let's do it. But to do something for the sake of doing something because you want to seem like You're doing something, and the people are going to step back and go, wow, you've really done something, only to find out you really haven't done anything. And in many ways, you've impeded on other people's rights, and potentially, you've got to get the Constitution. So let's all slow our roll here. Let's all slow our roll. But that's the reality of it's virtue signaling. It isn't. Even Bernie Sanders is like, yeah, you know, it's not going to, it's no guarantee. There's no magic wand. None of that stuff, right? It's not going to change anything overnight. Then why do it? It's like with taxes. You bitch about taxes. Oh, the rich, 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 rich. Oh, the bitch. They go. Everybody throws the fit and all this stuff. If people are serious, then stop bitching and talking about the tax rate and start going, how do we fix those quote unquote loopholes so they can escape these things? Right? I got friends who are very wealthy, and we, they laugh all the time. They're like, you raise my rates to 100%. I'll figure it out. That's what I pay these people for. Right? Every one of you listening right now, is your goal to pay every single penny? Or is, do you try to figure out ways that you, too, can use certain things? You go into your accountant. What's your accountant say? How many miles a day do you drive for work? Two. 
20? Oh, okay, maybe, right? Hey, I see you got a lot of uh, receipts here and stuff that you've done for lunch. Well, those were just me hanging out and stuff. Well, it was the middle of the day. You, you, you talked about work. You know, everybody's looking for something. But if you're serious about changing, then do it. Do it for because you think, hey, we've got a problem. We can address it. We can do these things. Those are the things we should be talking about. But the reality is, is if we're serious about guns and the violence, we can look around the globe and find out there are other countries who have a ton of guns. They don't have the anger problem. And that's our issue. We have undisenfranchised, pissed off, angry men who feel like their life is spiraling out of control. There is zero meaning. They feel like they've got nothing. And we've got to figure out, okay, why do you feel that way? Why do you have no friends? Why in the most technologically driven time in history do millennials, 80% of them say, I don't have any friends. And almost half of them say, I don't even have any acquaintances. What? I was talking to uh, a couple of the radio hosts their day, and they're like, Chad, do you still have a bunch of friends? And I said... I've got probably five to seven friends with th- that, that are close friends of mine that are not just close friends. These are kids. One of them was a kid I went who was there when I was born because his mom and my mom were best friends. And I've got four or five friends that we talk almost on a daily basis, whether it's text or through Facebook or, 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 or on the phone, that I went – and get ready for this co-op with like pre preschool we're still good friends it's nuts but when I talk to a lot of these millennials who are interns they don't have friends they don't have friends like that they don't have close friends they don't and it is weird it's an odd thing they're more connected than ever. My God, there's something they're doing now called text your neighbor. I don't know if you guys have heard of this. I could never, I would never even think about doing this, but it just shows you the wackiness of what's going on. A new texting trend people are talking about on social media. Some seem to be texting their number neighbor or text store neighbor. It's a little hard to understand at first. No, the number neighbor probably doesn't actually live next door, but chances are they could live in your neighborhood. Here's how it works. Okay, so they're going to tell you how it works, right? Like, Producer Phil, you and I are a little bit older. We live in the, I think we live in the best time as far as our generation, even though there's less of us. We knew what it was like to be 70s parented and have freedoms. And at the same time, we've also knew what it's like to have technology. But could you, I want you to listen to this and tell me if you could ever do this. If the last four digits of your phone number are 2222, your number neighbor would be 2223 or 2224. <laughs> so you just text those people. Hey, what's going on? I'm your text door neighbor. What? What? Like, that's... <sighs> that's insane. That's like, that's what we're doing now. <laughs> that's what we're doing. How about just looking over the person next to you and going, hey, man, what's up? Right? Hey, I see you like the, the Rams, the Raiders, the Cardinals, the Dodgers, the Cubs, the whatever. You know? 49ers. Oh, cool. What's happening, man? Hey, that's a weird thing. I get it, right? Like now, it's, I'm sure it feels awkward, right? To just even approach another human being like that. That's why I continue to tell everybody sports is so vitally important in young kids' lives because not only does it teach you to overcome things, to learn new things, to face obstacles, but you start building relationships and friendships in those things that are amazing. But randomly texting people just seems a little stupid to me. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson. Ciao. Ciao. With your Twitter, you can feel free to tweet at me. I do love hearing from you. We've got a story about animals here that is it's a kind story. Just want everybody to understand it. It's a very kind story. We're going to talk about that <laughs> just a little bit. You guys are going to laugh at this one. It's a kind story. It is. It's the Chad Benson Show. Don't 
Don't let the Washington Beltway strangle you. This is where the exhausted majority comes to refuel, realign, and reevaluate. This is Chad Benson. It's a lizard the size of a toddler on the loose in a San Diego neighborhood. Seen near a pond, it's a four-foot monitor lizard. Reptile handler Susan Nowicki is out hunting the lizard. My guess is somebody bought it as a pet. And she says there is a danger to it being out in the neighborhood. These guys have a really nasty bite. I mean, it can lead to significant stitches. Um, and flesh wounds. It's been tough to catch because it likes to hide in trees, bushes, and the pond. Yeah! It's probably either an Asian water monitor, right? Or a Nile monitor. But what happens is, I always do this because people always ask me because I have so many big lizards, right? And I tell people, people would, 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 would they're going to buy an animal, and rarely do they think about what that animal's going to be, right? <laughs> They buy an animal, they think, oh, I got this great animal, and then they have no idea what it's going to be. They have no idea that, hey, that animal you bought, right? And it's do- like you see with dogs, right? You see this cute puppy that's a St. Bernard or, or this cool puppy that's a, that's a Great Dane, and you don't realize that thing's going to be a, a horse minus a jockey. <laughs> I was in San Diego yesterday. If I'd have known, I wanted to try to catch it because that's the kind of thing I'd do to save the city, of course. Of course. Speaking of animals, kids, I want you guys to smile. Parenting is tough. I think you guys all know that. Animals, nature, it's tough, man. Nature, we have this weird world of equality that we're trying to push and all kinds of things. And, you know, you can't even let your kids go to the park by themselves because if you do, you could get in trouble and they'll take your kids away. A lioness in Leipzig, which is in Germany, uh, she had the same thing, man. Parenting was so tough she was struggling she had a little postpartum depression all of these things were going on and finally she just decided i'm just sick of these kids and she ate the cubs <laughs> in front of onlookers Chad, she ate them whole they said on friday her two newborn cubs They said the inexperienced lioness also took care of her cubs in the evening before suddenly completely eating the two cubs while grooming them an autopsy and thus an examination of the Cubs cannot take place because of this. <sighs> One of the reasons they said could be the inexperience of the mother, right? They said she was calm. She ate them and she's like, all right, I'm done. Look, kids, nature. Producer Phil, remind everybody what nature could do to you. Nature will mess you up. Mess you up. And if I was there, and I I was there, you know, let's say Jack and I were there, right? And, And we saw this happening. And I would look at Jack, and I would say to him, you better behave. Well, that's what happens. <laughs> Chad, you're so wrong. You're such a jerk. 323 538 2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Speaking of kids, what do kids like to do? They asked a bunch of kids, what are your favorite activities you like to do with your parents and you would like to do, right? With parents. And it's interesting. It really is. Like, Stuff that you'd like to do that isn't, like, home stuff. And I found this to be interesting. Uh, Number five, go to the movies. Four, go to the pool. Three, play sports. Two, exercise. Go to the beach, right? These are things that they, they would love to do with their parents. But the stuff that they do quality time that they want with their parents. Make a meal together. How easy is that, right? Watch a movie at home. Bath time. Help their children with homework and eat meals together. The eat meals together is so vitally important. And I don't think people understand that because so many people don't do that anymore. And we look at this world of people are, 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 you know, we we have anger. We have all these things. Dads are are in many ways. They feel disenfranchised. They feel like they're thrown out, uh, that it's not even an important thing anymore to have a father in the home and you ask anybody who's real to tell you that's a bunch of bs but you can't say stuff like that anymore because in this day and age if you do somehow it demeans the mother which is a bunch of crap right 
having a mother father in the home is vitally important. Having a mother father in the child's life is vitally important. But eating meals together, things like that are so important. You watch families that do things like that. You know what you don't have? You rarely have issues. Not saying it doesn't happen. Not saying that there aren't people out there that are raised by, you know, a, a single mom, a single dad, a, a grandma, an aunt that don't get through life and excel. But the odds are better. But you can't talk about that in this day and age. Just knowing that, you know what, just tucking your kid in at night goes a long way. Really? Yeah. Isn't that weird? Shouldn't be. But in this day and age, it is. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show. It's your Twitter, Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Over 600 individuals were arrested at where they were working. Um, on Wednesday morning by different ICE officials. It happened over, you know, the course of the morning, and it was in seven different sites, but six different cities across the state. So they've all been taken to this processing center in Jackson, Mississippi, where, you know, each one of them will be looked at, um, their different immigration statuses will be assessed, and they'll be taken before a judge, depending on the circumstances. Yeah, so that was a big raid, Mississippi, uh, that took place. Lots of people. By lots, not really. I'm 700, give or take. Well, what's going to happen? Well, first of all, I continue to point out, why are we not taking a look at the employers? Why is not really getting through to them that you don't hire people that are here illegally, right? Not because you're an awful person and you, and you hate people that of different, you know, countries and, and, and color, but because that's not what you should be doing. It only encourages so we should be looking at the employers. But this is supposedly planned for a year, right? And people are, of course, extremely critical of it because how dare you do something like that, ICE? Trump administration critics are calling the enforcement draconian and complaining that the inf- operation left numerous children without their parents with no clear indication when they would see them again. Local reports say in some cases, children were taken to a local gym until someone could figure out what would happen to them. But immigration officials are offering no apologies and said they began planning this operation more than a year ago. All right. So that's the politics of it all, right? Like today, you've got uh, the one and only Beto O'Rourke talking uh, about this. This is um, part of the environment in this country that sees immigrants as the enemy or a danger or something less than human to be treated in this way. Which is what? They're not supposed to be here. So what do you say to that? Right? And then this is the perfect example of the politics of it all. It is terrifying for the families who've been torn apart, for kids who don't know when or if they're going to see their kids uh, their their parents again right did the parents ha- maybe know that this could happen probably thought it was highly unlikely but the immigration battle that goes on here and the politics of it all this isn't about the kids it's any other how many people today across the country whether they're residents or natural born citizens or just citizens that have been naturalized, right? So pretty much everybody, right, are going to be in trouble today and potentially be taken away from their family. But there's no politics to it. Remember, the politics are what matters. 
It's like we talked about with last week how mad everybody was, right? Neil deGrasse Tyson, why? Because he, he tweeted out something. And in that tweet, pointed out the statistics comparatively to what took place in El Paso and Dayton, how many people die from medical errors or the flu, things of that nature. But there's no politics in it, right? Like nobody is rallying for the flu. There's no politics. Nobody's pro-flu. Like, man, the flu is pretty damn good, you know. There's not the National Flu Association who has given money to the Democrats or the Republicans to continue to throw the flu out there, right? It's, and it's the same thing here. What about the person today who's got a bunch of tickets that they haven't been able to take care of and, they're, and their kid's in the back seat and they get pulled over and they got a suspended license and they've got a bench warrant and they're going to end up going to jail and somebody's going to have to come get them and they're watching this. Nobody's that, but there's nothing there politically. There's nothing. It's amazing to watch the way, that especially the left, fights in so many ways. Just be honest, right? These are future voters. That's your hope and dream. That's what you're hoping and praying for. Let's have an honest conversation about it. Right? I'm I'm all about that. I have a little bit of honesty. But you I like the picking and the choosing of how you're going to care for certain things. Pick choose let's you know. I said this yesterday to somebody, like this whole thing in El Paso, awful as it is. <laughs> for Beto. Somebody behind the scenes, I guarantee, and said, this, this, this is going to give your uh, campaign maybe a shot in the arm. <gasps> That's horrible, Chad. Why? Because it's honest. Beto's got more time in the last five days. He was becoming a complete also ran. Just like, <laughs> what happened to that guy? Right? Like he was the second coming and he's disappeared. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. By the way, for all of the mess that we are politically, could we just look at Puerto Rico and just kind of a smidge laugh? And because Pedro Luisi didn't submit the proper documentation and didn't get the right confirmation, they brought him to court. And so finally on Wednesday, the Supreme Court of Puerto Rico heard the case. They took everything into consideration and said that the loophole that Pedro Luisi used to become governor is actually unconstitutional. <laughs> Thus calling his entire four days as governor unconstitutional and told him he had until five o'clock to leave the office. (laughs) So three days, three days. People are probably looking around going, good God. The last guy said some horrible things, but at least he wasn't this much of an idiot. So you're working on three days and nobody wants that job, by the way. Like they're offering it to people. Like, do you want to be? Nah, I'm going to pass. I'm going to just. I'm just going to just pass. You guys have fun. Just enjoy your thing. You do you. You do you, boo. You enjoy your thing. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. You can tweet. You know, we've been talking today about the red flags. We're talking today a lot about, you know, just family and, and, and why kids are so angry. And a ton of people are talking about, you know what, the dad thing. We identified the other day, Dr. Farrell talked about the fact that you go look at mass shooters and how many of them come from fatherless homes? How important some of this stuff is? Why are kids angry? Why are kids, you know, why? I mean, we're living in a time now where, you know, you got colleges talking about toxic masculinity and, 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 you know, guys feeling less than. And you can't think there's not going to be some sort of reaction. It's going to be negative. Right. We don't drill down. Why don't we drill down? Because once again, there's a lot of things that we are no longer concerned anymore about data. We're concerned about feelings and how does that make somebody feel? If it makes somebody feel like if you if you go and dispute somebody and you bring data with you, right? You bring data with you and say, here's the data of all this. You, and you hurt somebody's feelings. Magically, you're anti them or whatever it is their belief. And that's not the way we... That's, it's just so stupid to think that we can't talk about things in a real truthful way, right? I, I, I like that. Let's talk about things in a real truthful way. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe my data says something different and your data says something different. And both of us are a little bit right and a little bit wrong because in this day and age, it's also tough to find data because everybody's got something. 
that they're pushing, right? Everybody's got something that they're pushing in some way, shape, or form. You can hire a scientist today to tell you the benefits of Coca-Cola or sodas and soft drinks. And they'll figure out a way to frame something. And maybe some of their data might have some truth to it, you know, for something. But the reality is, is everybody's got something they're selling you. So it's even tough at times. Screw the fake news. Trying to find real data can be tough. That's why you've got to, and, and that's why in this day and age of how we pick and choose where we go to get our information, you've got to be willing to go to another site that you know will juxtapose any position you have and give you things that your site that you tend to go to isn't going to tell you, right? If you're on Breitbart and you're looking at something and you're like, I don't know, this, yeah, this is so true. Hold on a second. I'm going to go to the, you know, to maybe the Huffington Post or somewhere else just to see, and you find out, well, wait a minute, these numbers are a little bit different. And then you put it together, and you're like, oh, here's the story. Right? Here's the story. And that's why I tell everybody when it comes to climate change, it's tough to get, everybody's got a model. Not all the models work. And then this model didn't do this, and this model was falsified, and this model's not here, and they're only telling you part of the story. And then you stand up and you go, I can't, I don't know what, what numbers to believe anymore. Frustrating. It is. It's crazy. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at me this right here, kids. This is spectacular. Ladies, if you're looking for a second job. Fully nude girls. It's very inappropriate. Stay at home moms earn extra cash. I don't think it should be on the main street like this. The sign hangs on the building for Candy's Gentlemen's Club. Neighbors want to take it down. It's kind of crass. Jetta Evelyn says she shouldn't have to explain to her eight-year-old son what it means. My son has seen this sign and he has asked mom, why would moms go be naked? And the fact that it has fully nude girls, stay-at-home moms, my son can read that. And it's, it's just kind of terrible. What you guys may hear in that little snippet is the fully nude girls and it's terrible and stuff. But what you don't hear is her eight-year-old son can read, and that is good. See, so the sign is working. (laughs) Chad, that is wrong. So there's a strip club, fully nude, right? Single moms. Right. Stay at home moms. Right. Maybe you just want to earn. Right. Like this could be your side gig. This is like potential Uber. But without having to drive around with a bunch of weirdos. The business doesn't have a liquor license, which has made it more difficult for the city to regulate. They got a preschool right here uh, for little kids. I don't I don't think they should uh, have to uh, see that. Some people I talked to off camera said they aren't bothered by the sign or the business. Councilman P. Festerson says they have made candies take a sign down under temporary sign restrictions before, but it also falls under free speech. Yeah, yeah. And they took the sign down, and then they posted a new ad. Right? So they took the sign down, and they posted a new ad, you know, about, like, look, if you're, basically it says, if you're not hot, we don't want, just pass us by. You know, we don't want you to apply for this. Totally nude. But you don't understand. The kid can read. So the sign is working. Next to a preschool. Well, they're not they're not looking for preschoolers, looking for the preschool teacher. Chad. Ah, you gotta love America. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at me. Among the dumbest selfies you could ever do, this one ranks way up there. Yeah. Where do you hear this story? Chad Benson Show. No fake outrage here. Just the real thing. The Chad Benson Show. She put an octopus on her face, and she says that turned out to be a big mistake. When Jamie Vachelia met up with some fishermen who'd hooked an octopus during a fishing derby August 2nd, he saw an opportunity for an unusual picture. It 
was a photo contest in in the derby hindsight now and looking back i probably made a big mistake michelle you put the small octopus on her face and posed it grabbed her face with its suckers then did something she didn't expect it bit her on the face what the hell are you doing you didn't expect that hey i'm going to take this wild animal i'm going to put it on my face because i expect this wild animal to be totally cool and just not be crazy wild Right, not in a situation where it's defending itself in fear. Doesn't this animal know I got an Instagram? Are you are you not familiar with Instagram, Mr. Octopus? Are you not familiar? You dumbass. It had barreled its beak into my chin and then let go a little bit and did it again. It was a really intense pain. It just bled, dripping blood for a long time. A giant Pacific octopus that lives in the Point Defiance Aquarium have a powerful beak used to break and eat crabs, clams, and mussels. And their bite contains a poisonous venom to immobilize their prey. Michelia says that venom left her in incredible pain. This was not a good idea. Hindsight, looking back, um, I will never do it again. Uh. <laughs> hey, hey, guys, this is not a good idea. I'm not going to do this again. <laughs> Hold my Chablis. <laughs> you know what she's lucky she didn't have was the blue ring octopus. You guys don't know what that is. Very venomous. Very, very. It carries enough venom to kill 26 adult humans within minutes. So she's lucky. And by the way, there is, uh, you can get blue ring octopi, if you will, octopus, whatever you want to call it, uh, at pet stores. So she's lucky. Right? She's, she's lucky it wasn't that, and then she's unlucky because she's an idiot. <laughs> you can't fix one, and you're lucky on the other one. Could you? Like, what is... This is, again, nature will mess you up. And a lot of times it's because you're an idiot. It's, nature's not even messing you up. Nature's just doing what nature does. Like, if I was to cross an alligator in the wild, right? And I think, God, you know it would be great to get right next to this thing and put my head inside of the alligator's mouth. <laughs> it's like, how stupid are you? Very. But doesn't it know that I have an Instagram? Is it unaware I have an Instagram? No, it's not. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three. I didn't think this was real. I had to Google it like ten times. I'm like, this cannot be real. But you want to know what's going on in this country, and the wackiness of it all. Rosanna Arquette. You guys are familiar with her, producer Phil. You're familiar with Rosanna Arquette. All I want to do when I wake up in the morning is see her eyes. There you go. <laughs> she. She tweeted this. I'm sorry I was born white and privileged. It disgusts me. And I feel so much shame. What do you what are you what are you what? What are you talking about? So you're sorry for being born who you are. Would you ask anybody else that? Would you? I'm just, I'm, I don't, like, are you sorry for being born who you are? Are you? That's what she tweeted out. I feel so much shame <laughs> for being born that way. Uh, didn't Lady Gaga do a, I was born this way? Right? I would never, I can't even imagine that. I just, uh, that's, but there you go. That's woke. And people probably, oh, that, oh, that is good. That uh, you should be, you sh we should all be shamed. Should be all be. And you wonder why people are walking around confused and angry and pissed off when you say that. Wait a minute, you're a famous actress and you're ashamed for being born even. Well, then we're ashamed that you were born too. You dumbass. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Hope you're doing well. Let's smile a little bit. Here's your useless fact of the day. If you don't like crowds, stay away from Tokyo. 35 million plus people live in Tokyo, the biggest metro area in the world. They have a thing called Oshia or pushers. Those are large people they hire to help push people into the trains because it's so busy. Have a great rest of your day. It's always night, night, Jack.
This is the Chad Benson Show.